This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of AMI. Alleluia Ministries International believes in the Bible and Christ. We are Christ-centered and Jesus is at the heart of everything we believe and do. Our mission is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Through this mission, we seek to empower believers and equip them with the tools to share the gospel with the world and to live a life of faith, hope and love in Christ. Jesus remains the same yesterday, today and forever. Just as it was in Scripture, His power is at work today in the church. We are AMI. Allow me to speak to you on what is known as the sacred. Now, if you be wondering that in the first service we go through a very short word and then the Holy Communion and then we give our offering, why speak about the sacred? Everything that is prophetic reveals itself through symbols. And the symbols used to reflect the awesomeness of the spiritual things that God wants his people to have may be neglectable, but yet extremely powerful. A number of things that is done today in the sacramental of the church finds meaning only through the prophetic. Those are symbolic, but yet those symbols are not to be undermined. Now very quickly, I bring to your understanding that the water of baptism that we do is not just taking a bath or taking another swim. The sacramental of going into being dipped in the name of the Lord in water is symbolic. Many of you will say that I have a better swimming pool and I swim for hours. But the swimming that you do on a Saturday or on your set aside time cannot be compared to that moment where the priest or his appointed one will dip you in the water. The Bible says that the one that is being conducted, the process that has taken place in your spirit is being expressed that you died in Christ and you rose with him. Amen. It is symbolic, but it's not a symbol to take lightly. For such symbols are sacred unto God. The sacred simply means that something that is connected to God and dedicated to a holy thing or a spiritual thing. Something that is dedicated and connected to God and set aside to represent a greater meaning that is beyond what eyes can see. Now, I love quoting the scripture when Paul was referring to the speaking of Jesus Christ in the last day or in the last supper. The reason why I often quote that scripture is because the meaning and the presentation of it reflect really what the church has to do with it. Jesus Christ broke bread and spoke to his disciples and he gave them a commandment. And Paul speaking to the church of Corinth gives them the same commandment. Now it just sounds good by the spirit of God in my spirit that as I present it quoting that scripture, it is correctly aligned with God. Now this is not a routine. This is something that I do you do in me because of the alignment we have perceived through the revelation given to us when it comes to Holy Communion. I want to carry on a read for the purpose of the sacred, the same scripture, 
hoping to reveal to you here and to you watching me home something that is crucial that will help you in the touch and touch not something that will help you in the go and go not something that will help you circumcise your tongue to know what to say and what not to say jesus first book of corinthians chapter 11 i take it further than 23 i go to 26 and if you will be kind enough i want you to read with me from verse 26 to verse 30 at the count of three we read together for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death till he comes stop there he's presenting holy communion and is giving it a meaning revealing what is behind the little bread and the little wine that we partake he say as often as you do that eating the bread and drinking the cup you are making a proclamation mm. is a proclamation without a voice but yet the loudest proclamation ever I receive it and it is a proclamation of the Lord's death till he comes sons and daughters of God you do not come to refresh yourself on the day of the Lord you do not come for a little bread and a little drinking. You come for something that is bigger, something that is uh, deeper. But as I often say that the meaning of an action speaks louder than the action itself. So if you will do something good not knowing the reason behind you doing it, it is just a coincidence. But when you are purposefully driven to do something and you do it accordingly, before even the act, God blesses the purpose, the driving force, the heart. Amen. Before helping that poor person, before the act, because in your heart it has been purposely established that you do so, God will look at that and bless you even before the act. So every time we eat, every time we have a Holy Communion, just know that we are stepping to do something that is beyond what we see distributed by our precious deacon, deaconess, ashes, protocols, or whoever may. It is something deeper. We make a proclamation, the loudest proclamation of the Lord's death until it comes. Mm. 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drink in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. This may be scary. And if you begin to shiver, may I please tell you, you have a good reason to. Reba Sete. The sacred things are never to be messed up with. Mm. It does not go with how long you've been in the church, your position in the church, your titles in the church, how big or how small you may be. What is sacred unto God remains sacred it does not go with your philosophy or mind nothing that we do can dilute the power of what is sacred unto god with what is sacred unto god there is a manner of doing and the consequences or i would rather say to put it in a bigger basket the result of 
our action toward what is sacred will either be a blessing to us or be the fact that we are destroyed. May I please remind you that we are in the time of grace. Amen. In the time of grace, the Bible shows us that uh, the Lord has spared us. It is a dispensation where Jesus Christ took our place, but it scares me to see that uh, even in the dispensation, known as the dispensation of grace, those who dared to mess up with what is sacred, did not get it well. The consequences of messing up with the sacred has not spared the lives. Right. It is as a simple servant of God this morning who has spent all night long on his knees and heard what God had to speak to his people that are stand before you. John the Baptist did not present himself to be anything else but the voice. The voice of he who goes before the Messiah to prepare the way. And this morning, for those of you listening to me, all I want to do is to be that voice. That voice that will speak to your spirit and help you understand the what and what not. That you may stop flowing and dealing with everything as if it was equal. In the kingdom of God, not everything is equal and not everybody is equal. This is to do with the calling and the purpose, not as just individuals. For we are all brothers and sisters. We are all served, yes. But God in our calling has positioned us differently. Amen. Paul says, what you do with the Holy Communion will bless you or will destroy you. He says it, I read it again. Therefore, because you proclaim through the Holy Communion the death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes. He said, hear me, as a result of it, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. The question will be, how is it that this has become the cup of the Lord? Because the cup, I bought it myself. The cup is the church cup. We used it last week. The one we provided, we got it downtown. How is it that it has become the Lord? Whatever you sanctified to the Lord becomes His. Reba Sete. Oh, may I please open a bracket, a huge one, to say to somebody, the reason why the devil has no authority to hurt you is because you are sanctified. Thank you, Jesus. And to be sanctified simply means that you are separated. You are put aside. He cannot touch you. See, the devil cannot it. touch me. The devil cannot touch me. Whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body. He's speaking about a manner. And here, the focus should not be on eating it. The focus should be on how you eating it. <laughs> Oftentimes the focus is not on how you do what you do, but how you do what you do. Not what you say, but how you say what you say. There is a man that to come to church. There is a man that to speak to your brother. There is a man that to approach what is sacred. There is a man that to speak of God's anointed. There is a man that to approach what is set aside. Even if you will say, my grandma has been part of this church. My father, my mother are part of this church. This should not stop you to do things in a manner. Mm. And he begin to say, for this reason, or therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. I have not come to church to be guilty. How can it be that I am under grace and I'm found guilty? Hear me. When it comes to the sacred, you're talking about something 
that uh, is part of the laws of God in the spiritual realm. It affects you right. in a way or another. There are people who have come to church, but because of the superficial life that they run, the lightness in the approach of whatever they do, they have been found guilty in the spiritual realm. And they wonder why is it that I am in church under a great anointing and things are not going well. In fact, let me tell you, worse is it that you are under a strong anointing and you do not know how to go about the sacred. Your judgment will come swiftly. Jesus. It shall be so heavy because the anointing brings heaven to earth and lifts earth to heaven. The anointing takes man's humanity, connects it to God's divinity, brings his divinity and embeds it on the humanity of man. The words say, he said, but let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. I had said that the focus here on verse 28 is not on eating or drinking. is on the manna. Amen. You are part of the church, part of a department, part of a home cell, part of what God is doing. Be careful on the manner you do things. In the house of God, we do not do things as we do back home with your auntie and your uncles. Amen. Your pastor is not your uncle. Amen. Your pastor is not your auntie. Yes. The house of God is not like the yard of your grandma. In the name of Jesus. There are certain things that you have to refrain, restrain yourself. Jesus. There is a manner. The sacred. I live to examine myself. And that this is what the man of God is saying. Examine yourself. Assess yourself. Always check where am I? Who am I speaking to? What am I doing? In which environment am I? Learn to think. Learn to examine yourself. So is the advice of the man of God. He said, but let a man examine himself every first service, every holy communion time. Examine yourself. Be sure to tune in next time for the continuation of this preaching. May intervene where you beg God and say, Oh Lord, I repent from this. Intervene and turn my story around. Should that not be done, that you go through the process of fixing it, Remember, what you have done against a man, you cannot fix with God alone. Always know that. You hurt me, you go to God for forgiveness, it is not enough. God will send you back to me. Right. Unless you fix it with me, with God is not sent. This is why men went to pay back. Three to four times what they owed, the old people. If you were blessed by this video, please share and spread the message on social media using the share links in this video. Be sure to like and share our videos with your friends and family. Tune in to catch his next sermon on the public channel on AMI-TV or on our live stream on AMITV.com. Keep up with all his latest updates by following him on social media platforms at Elflukar.